and your group of uh, individuals uh, need to take accountability for uh, some of the polarization that we're seeing. Projection is universal. What we block from our awareness, what we don't acknowledge, we seek to hurl out. Projection is our futile attempt to absolve ourselves of responsibility for our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors by denying what exists in us while finding the same qualities in other people. Projection never works. Our psychological trash does not magically leave our mind when we demonize others. You may feel a temporary catharsis, but you're losing, not gaining, psychological freedom. Psychological freedom comes from your decision to acknowledge your mind as the causative agent of your experience of reality. Politicians will exploit the human weakness to project. Using propaganda, they aim to drum into our minds scapegoats onto whom we project what we do not want to acknowledge in ourselves. Individuals who are psychologically free will be less susceptible to totalitarian propaganda. In The True Believer, social philosopher Eric Hoffer observed, mass movements can rise and spread without belief in a god, but never without belief in a devil. Usually, the strength of a mass movement is proportionate to the vividness and tangibility of its devil. To endanger my kids and endanger us all of future lockdowns and risk all of us having a slower recovery. If you make a choice, a personal choice, to not get vaccinated, then I will have no sympathy for you when you come to me and said, oh, but I can't go out to a restaurant with my friends, or I'm not being allowed to go to the gym, or my employer uh, is telling me I have to continue to work from home. Uh, you don't have a right to endanger others. Hoffa recounts that before the final solution, when Hitler was asked whether he thought the Jew must be destroyed, he demurred. We should have then to invent him. It is essential to have a tangible enemy, not merely an abstract one. Nazis argued that Jews were vermin that spread disease. If you thought that most Germans saw through the propaganda and merely went along because they were intimidated, you would be wrong. German doctors claimed that Jews were especially responsible for outbreaks of typhus. They published essays claiming that Jewish people's supposedly low cultural level and uncleanliness were to blame. Yesterday's low cultural level has morphed into labeling the unvaccinated and those not in step with COVID policy as anti-science who manifest villainous disregard for the safety of others. Yes, there is a small fringe element in this country that is angry, that doesn't believe in science, that is lashing out with racist, misogynistic attacks. But Canadians, the vast majority of Canadians, are not represented by them. And I know will not allow those voices, those special interest groups, those protesters who can, I don't even want to call them protesters, those anti-vaxxer mobs to dictate how this country gets through this pandemic and how we recover our economy free from lockdowns where people can get back to work and back to doing the things they want to do and keep our kids safe. They don't get to dictate policy of this government. After the invasion so of Poland, German public health officials repeatedly urged occupation authorities to isolate Jews further from the rest of the population and deny them access to medicine. In the face of widespread illiberalism, if we are resigned to think that there is little we can do, we will get the politicians we deserve. I just think of our kids watching all of this. Nightly news, day in and day out. And I just wonder, you know, I've got four young kids and what they're growing up to in a, in a world where we're so divided, these kids increasingly fearful, isolated, disconnected, and we're teaching them that. And it doesn't have to be that way. Yet there is much we can do. Understanding psychological freedom, 
undoes the error of projection. If you wish to induce a state of compliance in your would-be constituency, it is clearly an advantage to frighten them. First, induce the amygdaloid fear response and then offer them a loaded choice, be saved or be damned. To deploy coercive power, totalitarians need your fear. Look them in the eyes and tell them you're doing all you can to stop the spread of COVID-19. I, I guess my feeling at this point in time is maybe we need to be completely a little bit more scary for the public. And a country as large as ours, that's 25% minority, can cause an awful lot of damage. And they are causing a lot of damage. The unvaccinated overcrowd our hospitals, overrunning emergency rooms and intensive care units. Hoffer explained how totalitarians use a sense of grievance to drive people to submit to authority. Grievances will arise in your mind, but you don't need to hold on to them. Totalitarians can only exploit the hate in your mind that you cultivate. For a moment, forget about more significant societal issues and get personal. Take back your personal projections. Learn from others' mistakes. If you remain unaware of your projections, politicians will exploit your grievances. So I'm wondering if you can reflect for a moment and think, have you played a role in inflaming some of the rhetoric no matter what side of an issue you're on, don't make arguments that begin with there is no other way, all sensible people know, and the like. Biden's executive order villainizes employees for reasonable concerns and hesitancies and inserts the federal government into individual medical decisions. People should not be made to feel uncomfortable for making a reasonable medical choice. As Hoffer explained, when we don't see the humanity in others, we provide oxygen to authoritarians. Oppose authoritarianism by seeing the humanity in everyone you meet. Awareness of your thinking patterns help you make different choices. When we lose our individual independence to the corporateness of a mass movement, we find a new freedom. Freedom to hate, bully, lie, torture, murder, and betray without shame and remorse. We're going to move to a situation where, to protect the health system, we're going to lock out people who are not vaccinated and can be. If you're making the choice not to get vaccinated, then you're making the wrong choice. You're making the wrong choice. And for safety's sake, and for the back to that point about how much work our nurses have to do, as this becomes absolutely a pandemic of the unvaccinated and we open everything up, it's not going to be safe for people who are not vaccinated to be roaming around the place spreading the virus. That's what they'll be that's what they'll be doing. Here and undoubtedly lies part of the attractiveness of a mass movement. We find there is the right to dishonor, which according to Dostoevsky has an irresistible fascination. There are high personal and societal costs when individuals renounce personal responsibility. The market system is so good at getting people from all over the world to work together that we barely notice how much we're cooperating. We are noticing the impact of less human cooperation as controls undermine the rights of individuals to make personal medical decisions. Totalitarians reduce human cooperation. Don't be a cheerleader for their illiberal schemes. Cultivate your psychological freedom to be less susceptible to totalitarian propaganda. When someone comes into a restaurant, they'll know they won't be sitting beside a table of people who are unvaccinated. When you go into a gym, when you go to a movie theater, you need to know that if you've done the right things, you get to be safe. You get to be rewarded for having done the right things. That's what it's all about. And those people who still hesitate, who still resist, well, they won't get to enjoy the same things that those who've done their part for others. It seems like a very logical thing. It seems like a very obvious thing. As human cooperation decreases and hatred increases, you too, not just the people the mandates are directed against, will suffer. The oxygen of capitalism is cooperation. The oxygen of totalitarians is hatred for differences.
exactly right. Kellen, we can talk offline and yeah. how we run that up to marketing. And All right. So I'm just going to say, Kellen, I think we have to be more blunt. We have to be more forceful. We have to say something coming out. You know, you don't get vaccinated. You know, you're going to die. I mean, let's just let's just be really blunt to these people.